Welcome nature lovers to the second installment of our nature short video series, Nature Nut. And the theme of today's episode is going to be UCF's wet and wild wilderness adventure. And today we are gonna follow the water that flows off of campus as it goes through the natural areas of campus. And to help me tell this story today, I brought Amanda Lindsay, who is head of our stormwater compliance here at UCF, and she's gonna tell us what's going on here. So here is one of the largest stormwater pipes that we have on campus. This takes all of the stormwater runoff that runs off of our impervious surfaces that we've installed on campus. So sidewalks, roads, and buildings, and all of that goes underground into these pipes, which we call gray infrastructure. Once it leaves these um, gray infrastructure, it enters what we call green infrastructure. So green infrastructure is typically something more natural um, that helps to filter the water of any pollutants or um, fertilizers that might come off of the landscapes and then also pollutants that might come off of roads. That's right. So what we're going to do now is follow this water as it goes through all those wonderful natural systems and see where our water ends up. So let's get this adventure started. All right, let's go. Okay, now once that water leaves that pipe like we showed you, which is the gray infrastructure, it enters into natural systems, which purify that water as it flows through campus. But the first step is to flow through this area here, which when it was first constructed back in the 1960s or maybe even earlier, was just a straight ditch. Right, so about 15 years ago, um, we diverted it from a straight ditch into one that has um, turns like a natural stream would have and then we also went through and we did a restoration planting along the banks of the stream so we added a whole bunch of native plants that help with nutrient uptake and help stabilize the shore um, so reasons that that's better than a straight ditch is because when the ditch is straight the water just kind of plows through there super quickly and doesn't have time to um, have any of those nutrients be taken up by any of the plants in the stream and it also leads to more erosion problems with that super fast moving water. That's right and now we have really this beautiful semi-natural system that's not only a beautiful natural feature but it also serves this pur purpose of helping clean our stormwater. You saw the water flowing out of that pipe well you can see here it's almost stagnant and where this water is going to go is underneath Gemini Boulevard and then it's going to go into a large forested wetland and that particular area 136 acre area is actually part of a conservation easement that was set aside when the university was built to help protect the water and to help offset or mitigate the effects of the development of campus. So after we're done here, we're going to take an adventure and go look at this big wetland easement and look at the other side and see how the water comes out from the other side of the wetland. So Amanda and I are now here at the outlet of this beautiful water feature, which is actually not a natural lake, but a stormwater pond. And unlike the ditch where we started, in the old days, you could pipe your water into a ditch and go into a wetland. Now, due to the changes in water regulations, if you're going to build a development that requires impervious structures and buildings and parking lots, you actually have to build a stormwater pond as a feature to help protect our waterways. And Amanda's gonna tell us a little bit about how these systems function. When we build up our impervious surfaces, our, our man-made landscape basically, the water has to run off. Um, and with that, it carries you know, nutrients from fertilizers and pesticides, herbicides. It carries, like we talked about earlier, sediment and oils from roads. So all of that um, to protect the environment comes into these man-made stormwater ponds. So it enters on one end and it slowly is able to um, seep from one end of the pond to the other, and with that slow movement through the pond, it's able to flow out of the pond, having had a lot of those pollutants and nutrients taken up by plants, um, and a lot of the sediment filters down to the bottom of the pond. So these ponds are a great uh, green infrastructure tool for cleaning the water that runs off of our landscapes.
Okay, so here we are. Amanda and I are now standing at the other end, the opposite end of this giant, well, 135 acre wetland conservation easement where we saw those inflows coming in from the two different areas. And this is the single point of exit. So all of this water has slowly flowed through this big seeping wetland. So now we've got very clean black water coming out of this wetland system. And this is where most of the runoff from campus leaves this point of campus. And where does it go from here, Amanda? So here is sort of a confluence with other runoffs from other municipal areas. Um, around campus. So all of the stormwater from those different areas converge here in this canal and then they e exit campus to the north in a creek that eventually ends up converging with the Little Econ River where it then meets up with the Big Econ and then the St. Johns River and then eventually the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, now I'm very excited to take you into the swamp where all of the water flows off campus. But this is an important wildlife corridor where bears go, coyotes, bobcats, and all the wildlife uses this wild corridor. And it just happens to be along the waterway where most of the water leaves campus. And those waterways and rivers are actually very important wildlife corridors in addition to serving this stormwater function. So let's go into this awesome. deep woods. Here we go. There's a loblolly bay flower. So that's one of the two different kinds of bays that kind of dominate this area. A beautiful flower. Um, the loblolly bay is actually Gordonia. So it's actually in the tea family, same family as camellias, whereas the sweet bay is a magnolia. Um, so even though they're both called bays, they're actually in different plant families, but they have similar white flowers. Very cool. There's a bunch of sphagnum moss there, look at that. This is the spot. Was this the same spot? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, this is definitely the spot. This is the spot, so tell us what you want to do. I could get over on that side. So where we are today is the location where this Blackwater stream courses through and ends up leaving campus. It's a very, actually very interesting wetland swamp ecosystem. And a swamp is a wetland that has forest or trees in it. And this particular one is dominated by two main trees, the bay trees, and there's a couple of species in here, which are wetland species. And then we also have these black gums. And there's two species, uh, Nissa sylvatica and Nissa biflora. And they are very characteristic of these low water, uh, lowland black water systems. Uh, they get wider at the base, which helps them kind of stabilize themselves in the wet system. They're deciduous and they're very important uh, swamp species in Florida. Okay, so here we are standing in the black water stream. Here you can really see with this uh, sandy bottom, the caramel colored water that flows through here. This is a 100% natural stream. It's also part of a conservation easement that we preserved. So this is where all of that water we talked about, the confluence of the water from offsite, all the runoff from campus goes through all those systems down to here and then flows off campus. And how does that connect us to the regional water system, Amanda? So just north of campus, um, the Little Econ River or the Little Econ Lock Hatchie River flows directly into the Econ or Econ Lock Hatchie River. So Dr. Bowen was talking about that caramel color of the water and that caramel color is actually a natural coloration that occurs from all of the tannins from the leaves that fall from the beautiful forest trees that we have here so this brownish um, red color of the of the water is actually a natural occurrence and, and is good for the water. That's right. And also then that we connect with the forested corridor to the river, again, that connects us to these wildlife corridors where the bears and the coyotes and the bobcats and other animals, the deer, uh, use these corridors for very important uh, transportation routes and very important uh, ways that they connect with different areas that they use. Right, which it's also super important to preserve these areas, right, so that That's these right. animals have places that they can move naturally and they're not crossing highways. That's right. You have to have the connections and corridors. So we're out here in the middle of the woods, right, far from any human action, 
but we find ourselves um, encountering invasive plant species. And since we're on this waterway where all of that storm water and human touched water leads, um, seeds and spores of invasive plants can end up in these super uh, serene and sequestered areas. So one thing we have to think about in our yards and at home is what plants we're planting and how those might spread farther away from our yard. So this plant that we have here is Ligodium, which is a vining um, fern. So it spreads by spores, not seeds. So it's super easy to spread through the waterways. Um, and this is something that can turn into a, a blanket on top of the forest. So um, knowledge of invasive species is something to know for, for your local area. So you can know how to be a good steward of your yard and your environment and not promote these invasive species. That's right, and another thing about the invasive species is they are in these natural areas, which means the natural wild areas you see do need to be managed, and the campus is very effective. We're very, we do a very good job of trying to control these invasive species to keep our natural areas in as natural a state as we possibly can. So invasive control is a very important part of managing these wetland systems. Thank you so much for joining us today on this second episode of our Nature Nut series, UCF's Wet and Wild Wilderness Adventure. We hope that you learned several things today. One, that we have these beautiful natural systems on campus, but also the role that these wetland systems play in protecting and purifying our stormwater. And thank you for joining us today, Amanda. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for coming out and getting wet with us today.